Hi everyone, I'm Tom and welcome to a bonus video here at Trains Are Awesome. Now, if you've been following our channel for a while, you know that sometimes I like to drop an extra video when there's a big piece of like railway news that's come out and I think you could say this is big. Yesterday, the MTA, the company that operates the New York subway, announced that it will finally begin a trial with platform screen doors at three of its stations. The stations that will get these platform screen doors are 14th Street and 3rd Avenue on the L train, Times Square on the 7 train, and Sutphin Boulevard on the E train. Now, platform screen doors have been something that the MTA has resisted implementing for a long time, but recently with the tragic news of a passenger being pushed in front of a train, um, they have been reconsidering it. Now, I personally am a huge proponent of platform screen doors. I grew up living in Tokyo, Japan, and uh, when I was living there, many different railway companies began to add these doors, both subway and mainline trains. And while this is a trial in New York City, I'll be curious to see how far it expands. Now, there are three types of platform screen doors, and the MTA hasn't officially announced which ones it's going to use yet. But let me break down the three types and offer my thoughts on what I think they will pick. So the first type is the half-height platform screen doors. These are perhaps the most common. Um, it goes till about here, and so you can still see the top half of the train. This mostly helps with ventilation of stations as well as lowering the cost significantly compared to type 2, which is full height platform doors. These are often used on metro lines that are completely automated. Uh, these full height platform screen doors, like the name indicates, leaves no room between uh, the platform and the ceiling, and it kind of obscures the view of the trains, but of course it's impossible to climb over, so it is a safer option. Finally, the third option is what I call cable platform doors. These actually don't entirely seal off a platform, but they're cables that can be lifted up and create kind of like a portal for you to step into the train. Now, my guess is that the MTA is going to implement the half-height platform screen doors, mostly because of cost and uh, because of reasons like ventilation, but that is completely just a guess, and I could be very wrong, so don't quote me on that. Um, there are some arguments for and against platform screen doors. The classic argument against platform screen doors has been, um, besides its cost, the space available. Of course, the New York subway system is over a century old, and some stations may just not be compatible with doors. There's the issue of their weight on elevated stations, and there's the issue of space on narrow platforms and the argument goes that you cannot retrofit an old station with platform doors that you need to build a station completely new um that's not entirely true i mean going back to the example of tokyo only one subway line in tokyo was opened with this platform screen doors already in place all the other subway lines have added them at every station along the line and sure, the infrastructure in Tokyo is very different than New York, um, but for example, Paris has added screen doors to an existing line already as well. So it's not impossible. And when it comes to the narrow platforms, I wonder if a platform is too narrow for a door that's a few inches wide, then it makes me concerned about how narrow it is in general. Like. That means there's not a lot of space between you as a passenger and that moving train. Uh, another argument against platform screen doors is their ineffectivity, especially if they do choose half height doors, um, because you could always still climb over them. And while that is true and a determined person may do so, it involves a lot more effort, which could be caught in advance, as well as it prevents accidents, because some accidents on the subway are just people that fall or people that get pushed and they are definitely effective towards that. Finally, the third argument is that New York City should be investing in mental health and homeless care instead of platform screen doors. 
And I hear you. I totally agree with that. We should be investing in those things. But I don't see it as a dichotomy. I think we can prevent issues like this on multiple fronts. And like I said before, not every incident with a subway is mental health related. I think platform screen doors are a sign of a modern transit agency that takes the passengers, staff, and safety uh, seriously. Only time will tell what the platform doors in New York will look like, how they will be expanded, and how effective they will be, but this is definitely a development that we will keep you updated on. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave a like, and if you want to see a trip report on the New York subway, stay tuned for Sunday. Subscribe to Trains Are Awesome so you don't miss it. Follow us on our social media and our Patreon. And thanks for watching. See you next time.